see you. Can you see me and hear me? Okay, so uh, we have uh, a, a patient of around 11 years now. PowerPoint. Okay, mama. It was detected during his uh, school health program. Also, he's complaining of poor weight gain and NVH class 2 breathlessness. The parents were told that the baby has some murmur in early infancy, but they First didn't follow up. On examination, he's severely malnourished, weighing 18 kg, except expected ag against an expected weight of 30 kg, with a respiratory rate of 28 per minute. Pulse rate is 90 per minute. His forelimb BP and saturation is uh, showing white pulse pressure. Cardiomegaly, as evidenced by the apex beat in left fifth intercostal space, uh, one centimeter lateral to the midclavicular line. He's having a continuous murmur of grade 3 by 6 at left upper sternal border. X ray is showing situs solitus. Levocardia, CTR of 65%, MPU is dilated, pulmonary plethora. ECG is showing sinus rhythm with a ventricular rate of 75 per minute, QRS axis of 75 degree, left ventricular hypertrophy, LV volume overload pattern. Clinical diagnosis, it's a congenital asinotic heart disease, increased pulmonary blood flow, moderate size PDA. So we proceeded with an echo. This is uh, four chamber view showing dilated LA, LV. In this modified parasternal short axis view, we are seeing a color flow pattern which is not typical of the PDA. It is somewhat proximal. So that raised the doubt of hydropulmonary window. On measuring, it was found to be 7 mm into 7 mm. Let me give another sedation. This is that hydropulmonary window without color flow. And uh, this iotopulmonary window was found to be around 14, uh, 14 mm away from the pulmonary valve. You can go to, you can go to so the diagnosis, echo-wise is 7 into 7 mm, intermediate type AP window with a peak systolic gradient of 60 mm mercury, 14 mm distal from aortic and pulmonary Sorry. annulus. There was also a pan-diastolic flow reversal yes. noted in ascending aorta and yes. arch, dilated LALV, trivial TR, good biventricular yes. function. Yes. We, so regarding oxygen. So Shaq, we will show some live echo now. Echo big. So this is. So uh, Avinash. PA. The frozen frame showing the defect. Measures around uh, 8.3 8 millimeters. The long axis of the iota showing the defect. The frozen frame uh, showing the distance from the aortic annulus at least uh, two centimeters. The short axis showing the pulmonary regurgitation and uh, the distance from the pulmonary valve in the frozen frame at least 15 millimeters. The dilated LV measuring around 62 millimeters. So, hemodynamics live. Yeah, so, the, so basically we have, uh, we have done the QPQS. The QPQS is more than 4 is to 1. The pulmonary artery saturations were 92 millimeters of mercury in the distal RPA and distal LPA, giving a shunt of more than 4 is to 1. We are showing the live uh, pulmonary artery pressure is around 84 against an iota of 139. So n right now what we are doing is we are going to cross AP window live. So I'm, I'm going on fluoroscopy. We have got an internal mammary catheter at the pulmonary artery. Yes. So, okay. Sure. Sure. So we are, we are, We are in the we are in the AP window. Yes. Fluorostop. Fluorostop. So, uh, Shrek, you are you are back with me. Okay, so we are we are going to cross the AP window now. So that is my catheter going into the ascending iota. 
but it is not remaining stable. So now I will try to manipulate. So now we have got the catheter. Uh, we have got the guide wire going into the subclavian artery. Are you seeing us live? Ah, okay, show the subclavian artery. Yeah, go inside. We'll, we'll enter the subclavian. Go inside, catheter inside. Yeah, that, no, that's an internal mammary catheter. I wanted, I wanted a sharper curve on the, sorry, stiffer, stiffer up there. I'm planning to enter into the subclavian now. So once I'm into the subclavian, yeah, since it was a eight millimeter uh, AP window, you also saw that the pulmonary artery pressures were pretty uh, high. So we are using a 1210 PDA device. Show, show the, with the QP by QS of uh, 4 is to 1, we feel that uh, the PDA device with the only one disc on the aortic end and no disc on the pulmonary end will still not stand a chance of embolization because we anticipate the pulmonary artery pressures to come down substantially. So right now I am taking out, show the heart. Yes. Uh, uh, Shaq, uh, uh, with the with 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 pulmonary vascular uh, resistance being quite low, even though the PA pressure is high and a large shunt, uh, yeah, the, with the device, the, the aortic pressure is going to press the device against the pulmonary artery and uh, give us uh, reasonable stability. The, the proximity, the yeah. We, we thought that since the defect was 8 millimeter, we are going to choose a 1210 PDA device. It's a life tech 1210 PDA device. Uh, any, any, your suggestion, Shaq? The twelfth, uh, the twelfth tens, twelfth tens pulmonary end is eighteen. I I take I take retention skirt is eighteen. Yeah. So right now I am going to come on with a pressure guidance. Uh, see, I have connected the side arm of my mullein sheath into the subclavian artery. It is right now getting somewhere, uh, the it's, it's about 160. So we are, we are pushing in, yeah, 1210 Life Tech PDA, which is going across. So this is opened. Uh, can you, uh, I have, I have now aortic pressure. So I will withdraw on my pressure guidance. Can you? So right now I am seeing the separation of the pressures. So at this, so now I will, uh, I'll find out whether I have trapped my pigtail. And so I will take out the pigtail with the wire and reintroduce. Actually, my, my aortic catheter has gone into the uh, PA. You saw that? Just uh, fluoro store that, fluoro store that. Okay, I'll show you that fluoro, show that. See, uh, at this particular point, my pigtail has got sucked in into the uh, AP window from the ascending aorta. So now I have taken it out. So this is the ascending aorta. Now we are going to go live with an angiogram, connect angiogram. Actually, the moment I release, it will get uh, aligned properly. You are ready? Sh 
should. Should. Okay. Get ready for an angiogram. Yeah, I agree, Dr. Allison. Uh, muscular VSD is another uh, choice. Uh, however, uh, uh, the cost between uh, duct occluder and the muscular VSD in our country is like 2 is to 1. Okay. So right now we can see that the, the aortic disc is sort of tilted towards uh, me. So I will give a gentle push. And at this particular point, I will try to go and deploy. This is a session named by TIN as complications A to Z. So let us see what's happening. I told TIN that it is not a good idea to name a co conference as complications, but still he persisted. Sorry for poking the, the cable on the right ventricular wall transiently. Okay, another angiogram. Get ready, Muhammad. Last angiogram. Then I will give the hemodynamics. You are ready? The right ventricular pressure is about 55 millimeters of mercury now. Yeah. And the, the iota might have gone up, I think. Just we are, we are waiting for the injector to be loaded. In the meantime, I'll just show you once the aortic pressure lies. Yeah. 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 So your choice will be a muscular VSD device? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so then I, uh, I d uh, you mean it is uh, pulled more into the PA? I will I will make a magnified view now. Uh, you are ready for the angio? Yeah, zoom it. Zoom it out. Zoom. Yeah. Ready? Ready? The waist uh, could have been a little bit more uh, uh, towards the iota, no? Yeah. yeah. Huh. Echo. Echo line. The I I aortic retention skirt was deployed in the ascending aorta. You 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 said the whole device itself to be yeah, color echo echo live echo live. So this is the echocardiogram now. In echocardiogram, actually the device looks good. So. RPM. Yeah, that just one PA pressure I will get you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 